Welcome back to War, Summoner's War, everybody, another episode of this. Uh, so in the last episode, I actually talked about my entire status update and what I've been doing with my monsters and what I have been doing off screen. And the most basic answer I can give you is, honestly, farming runes. Farming violent runes. Uh, so I didn't really mention this, but um, because you know how like I made a lot of rookie mistakes, even like when I was in mid game, uh, basically... I would always be spending my crystal on premium packs, which is not the way to go. Um, honestly, if you spend... Let me show you. If you spend your crystal on this right here, late game, or like when you're transitioning into late game, you are honestly wasting crystals. You are totally wasting crystals. Uh, because that is not the way to go. There are many other ways that you will get more nat 3s to nat 4s. Uh, you can just save up mystical scrolls and or summoning stones by doing tower uh, the trial of ascension by doing events by eventually farming plenty and plenty of the chiral dungeons in which you'll eventually get some things some mystical scrolls and so on and so forth basically what i'm saying is that there are ways there are ways in which you get additional monsters and you don't need to be doing these like oh like i know it looks tempting addition 11 additional at least guaranteed in the nat threes it's tempting but you don't want to do that uh, instead, the best way to be spending your crystals, generally, is to be spending them on this right here. Energy recharges. You simply spend 30 crystal to get an additional 90 energy. Once you're down at zero, uh, zero-ish energy, you know? And you just keep doing that. You basically keep doing that and you just keep saving up and that's what happens, you know? Like, you save up crystal, spend it on energy, mass amounts, and what do you use the energy for? Most of the time, it's Kyle's Dungeon. Because once you are going into late game, instead of focusing on getting more monsters, like for example, if I spend all my crystals, it's because I'm like, I'm under the mentality of like, oh, I want more good nat 4s and good nat 5s, which, fair enough, right? But at the same time, it's like, if I already have all these monsters, I mean, look at this, look at this, I have all these level 46 stars. The majority of them, like 90% of them, I'm going to be using throughout PvP, you know, and all this other stuff. So, the basic logical question is, would you rather keep getting more nat 4s and nat 5s that are going to be shitty ruined? Or do you want to focus on having godlike runes on these current monsters? Honestly, I would focus on godlike runes on these monsters because you want to have godlike runes. You want to. So, how do you do that? You farm. Instead of spending your damn crystal on more premium packs, you spend it on refills for energy. On top of that, I also have plenty of energy here that I haven't even used yet and that I keep refilling, but yeah. So, let's do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you my teams for farming, autoing. I, I can auto Giants B10 and Dragons B10. Uh, I basically quit on Necropolis a long time ago because I didn't have an Necropolis team. Dude, I can like barely do... I mean, I'm sure I can do B6 and even B7 now, but like I quit a long time ago. I haven't even tried this. I know for a fact that I cannot auto B9 or B10. There's no way. I don't have the team yet. If you look at the monsters used... Colleen, Foucault, Jiangfei... Xiao Lin, Regal, Lucian, Shiwa, Hua. Okay, I just want to let you know that from all those eight monsters that I just named, I have none. I'm just saying. Uh, Adrian, Feng Yan, Homunculus, Huahi, Theomars, Belladion. Okay, I have three monsters from these top 15. Like, you've got to be kidding me, people. You've got to be kidding me. This is ridiculous. It's honestly ridiculous, which is why I can't do this Necropolis. Okay. So I'm going to actually show you what I do for when I farm B10. Now for B10, honestly, if I had Lucian, oh my god, I would be so freaking amazed. That, that's the biggest reason why I sometimes get so tempted to buy premium packs, because I need Lucian so badly. So many people have him, and I don't have him. I know that he's not, quote, required. But let me tell you something, he makes everything a lot faster. He speeds up the process so much, especially when farming, and I don't have him. Because here's the thing, I'm currently using this girl. The thing is, she's RNG based because her final attack is similar to Lucian's in that it ignores defense. She's an offensive monster. I mean, look at her attack. She's like a 2300 total attack and has a chance to ignore defense. And it's basically random. That's the part that I don't like, that it's a randomized attack. It attacks random targets. The first attack of the four will always target the one that you select, but her other ones are random. And yeah. And on top of that, it's only a 25% chance to ignore the target's defense, whereas Lucian's is guaranteed. Lucian also has 
elemental type advantage, which basically means that he will always crit, whereas Fee, it's questionable. She's at 61% crit rate. But the point is that she's no Lucian. I mean, yeah, she's a dark monster, and she's more utilized in other situations because she's darks, because as you already know, lights and darks have more utilization. But when it comes to farming, Lucian outclasses Fee in every way. It's just, you can't compare that. So basically what I'm saying is I would replace her and put Lucian once I actually had him will rune, but I don't. Um, this is basically my team, though. I focus on having two offensive monsters being Theomars and Fee. Shannon is support. Veramos, I mean, that that leader skill that's that's pretty good right yeah and uh well yeah um let's go ahead and do this now here's the thing that i want to see because i haven't actually tried putting um theomars as the leader it's more risky because that's less hp but let's take a look at this all right here, we, here comes the auto here we go so just kind of look at how the the way that the team works now um for the most part i mean sometimes you do get cc'd by that stupid ice to freeze you know but whatever not much you can do because verimos cannot cleanse that as you already know verimos can cleanse every single debuff in the game except inability effects which means like stunning freezing you know stuff like that um but yeah just look at them look at the offensive monsters and theomars and fee and how much damage they actually do the thing about fee as i keep saying is that she's rng based because sometimes she look look at that did you see what she just did right there that, that's great right the thing is, some okay. Here's one thing that I freaking hate about autoing. I haven't talked about this. I wish there was an option that you could set the target in area three of autoing, because it saves you like another 30 seconds. I kid you not. If you don't target the one in the middle, which usually the AI does not automatically, then they're gonna target the other golems, which is freaking annoying. I hate that so much. So like when you're actually truly autoing and not paying attention, like when you have the phone on the side and you're on the computer or something or whatever. That's true autoing, as in you're not paying attention until you actually put the stage. Then you're gonna forget this. To target the one in the middle, because if you focus on the one in the middle right away, also this time it was kind of shitty because I didn't land a defense debuff on him. Hmm. Until just now, which was kind of late. Oh well, that kind of sucks. A little slow there on my end. Honestly, it's. I mean, some of his words RNG entirely anyway, so that's that's expected. And sometimes you get more lucky, sometimes less lucky. It just kind of depends. But yeah, as I was saying, um, I wish there was an option for that, like to control that automatically. There's an option for the boss, you can actually set the order of attacking the boss. For giants, I attack the giant in the middle only, I don't focus on the other stuff, because who cares? Okay, so here we go, okay, she, just, she used her good attack right now, which is not good. Alright, so here's giants, now, I can play giants, like, I want to say 98% of the time successfully. Uh, there's very few times where I do not do it. Although that time, he critted Theo and he almost died. Oh my god. Okay, here's the other reason why Theo's freaking amazing. Um, he has that safe fail. In case you fail, which I did, he has that safe that he actually survived. Now, here's the thing. I did Molotech Tech Giant pretty fast this time. Although, I haven't mentioned this, that um, usually when I auto Giants... See, that was 219. My best is actually 155, which is... That's quite a big difference of RNG right there. Um, as you can see... It's not a speed team, and the main reason why it's not a speed team is because I don't have Lucian. That's partially the reason why. Uh, Lucian would probably give me an extra, like, would save me another 40 to 50 seconds-ish, which would actually bring that to about 130. Uh, I know some people can do it in a little over a minute. I don't know how the hell those people do that, um, but they do it. But, yeah, um, so like I was saying, um, well, actually, I kind of said everything I needed to say. There really isn't much else to that. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, I was gonna say this, that usually when I auto Giants 10, even though I said I clear it 98% of the time, keep in mind that about half the time of my successful runs, which basically means about 49% of my, of my total runs, one of my five monsters dies. Like seriously. But that doesn't matter, because they die when like the Giant is already like at half HP with like another three to four DOTs. Um, it's either Fee or... Shannon doesn't actually die because she has elemental disadvantage. Ame doesn't die. Vera most rarely dies. Fee usually dies. And sometimes Theo, if the turn is a little unlucky, in which case the elemental king activates the safety, and then his turn goes, and then he gets attacked right away uh, because the elemental king is over once he attacks. It's just unlucky. It's mostly Fee who dies. I mean, she does the majority of her damage, you know, for the entire run. 
And really, Thea is there to just kind of speed up the process in the first four areas anyway, to like kill all those crystals fast with her ignoring defense. But yeah, so I, I just wanted to let you know that I was like, oh yeah, even though I cleared all the time, I'm not saying that all five of my monsters always survive, because they don't. It's like half the time they survive, half the time one of them dies, usually Fee. Uh, so, that's Giants, as you can see. It was a 219. On average, I get about two, yeah, 210 to 220-ish. That was actually a little bit slower than usual, because I usually get it a little under than 210. About like 205-ish, and then my best was 135 somehow. Alright, so, moving on to Dragons. Now, the thing about Dragons is that... I can, I auto this, if I do a complete auto, like not even looking at the screen at all the whole time, I do this, I would say maybe about 85% of the time, successful. There's a couple of things that can go wrong, and I'm going to point them out as I go, I'm going to auto it of course, but um, here's my team. So I have Vertiheal as my leader, with 28% attack bonuses, Amon, Veramos, Theo, and Megan. Now, the team is not great because, first of all, Belodion can replace Amon because Belodion can seize, just like Megan, and that's good. And then Sigmaris can actually replace uh, Theo because Sigmaris is better than Theo in this particular situation. The thing is, I never fuse for Sigmaris, and I actually should because I'm an idiot for not doing that, but okay. Let's do this. Alright, so, let's see. Now... The first few rooms are rather simple. Now, the Zyros room, which is, I believe, the third one, Area 3, that one can pose some problems because sometimes Vertiheal dies. The run-in is still successful if he dies, but it slows it down significantly. And... Let me actually... Well... Okay, here's one thing that I don't like, like I said before. Because when I'm actually paying attention to the auto, I manually target Zyros, because it makes sense to do that to speed up the time but if you don't your monsters are going to focus on the crystals which i hate that slows down like another 20 seconds you know and i don't like that so instead of what i actually end up doing because i'm paying attention now is i target zyros manually like that the goal is to kill zyros as fast as possible but also cc the crystals because if you don't cc the crystals okay i cc'd one of them that's good as you can see that's a stun but if you, oh my god, okay, if you don't provoke Zyros with Amon, and, and here's the reason why I also like Amon, um, why Amon is not entirely outclassed by Belodion, because he can provoke the Zyros, which essentially means that your team can survive. Now, Theo got hit pretty hard right there this time, it usually doesn't happen, it's usually Verta heal. Um, but you know, Amon's provoke is actually a lifesaver when it comes to fighting Zyros, because he can, he can provoke him, which means that the dragon will only use his first move. There's a lot of people that can handle the dragon fairly well, but they actually fail at Zyros more than the dragon in B10. You'd be surprised how many people actually have that problem. I usually don't have the problem unless Verti Hill somehow gets owned and annihilated and I don't stun the crystals with um, Super Crush or something, you know, but here's the dragon now. So, I haven't talked about this, but I actually focus on the right crystal before the dragon. I try focusing on the dragon first. Uh, first of all, it's more risky. I die maybe about 40% of the time. Um, and it's actually slower, which means that it's not in my best interest to be doing that. Instead, it's best to focus on the right crystal. So, the one on the left, it says it inflicts uh, DOT for all enemies for three turns. The one on the right gives immunity, as you can see, to the dragon for three turns. It removes all debuffs and then it gives immunity. Now, what you want to focus on is how many DOTs are currently on the crystal. Okay, it's actually dead. Um, here, here's one thing that I don't like about this battle, which can sometimes cause me to die. This middle skill, it says when a tower is destroyed, the dragon deals a deadly counterattack to the one that took the last blow. This skill is the reason why sometimes I die, like 50% of the time. Like, it's ridiculous. And I'll actually tell you why. Well, okay. Now, it's a little hard to explain all of this, but as you can see, the Dragon's Run is going very well. As you can see, it's going very well. It's a little bit on the slower run, because I average about 3-ish minutes, a little bit over 3 minutes. Uh, you can get this down easily to 2 minutes if you have better monsters, or even less than 2 minutes, but... It's... Honestly, the best I can do at the moment. I don't have godlike runes, but it'll work. Look at that, 307, best is 304, so I was 3 seconds away from tying my... Wow, okay. Oh my god, that's a terrible rune. I'm selling it. 
Okay, but I didn't mention this. Um, because I'm basically gonna end the video right now. Now that I actually talked about all these things. Um, I mean, I guess I could show off. Do you actually want to see the? I don't even know, but I was gonna show the um Hall of Magic B10 performing essence, but I don't really think that's that important. Uh, okay, what I'm gonna do? Oh my god, are you serious? Hold on. I need to get one more energy, dude. Because I want to show off what the skills that this freaking dragon has, man. I really do. Because I want to talk about that. Because remember when I was saying that, like, for the... When I'm on true auto, I die maybe about 15 to 20% of the time. I was, was like, okay, let's just go 20%. So I, I have a successful run 80% of the time when I'm on true auto. Okay, as in not focusing on what's going on. But when I'm on like semi-auto, like it's on auto, but I'm actually controlling who to target. Like for example, picking Zyros in B3, and then picking, switching over to the dragon with the DOTs, which is hard to explain unless I get an additional energy so I can actually show this. I have to wait another 32 seconds to get another energy so I can actually show the skills of the dragon and talk about this and how this works. I mean, really, the main focus of this video is Dragon's B10, because Giant's B10, I already made several farming videos about that, like how I do that, and that's generally easier than Dragon's B10 anyway. But, yeah, I want to focus on the Dragon. World Boss. No, not enough energy. Of course not. Okay. So here's a Dragon. Now... There's actually a very simple way in which I can always win dragons if my five make it to the fifth area. So assuming all five of my monsters made it to the dragons, as in the fifth area of dragons B10, I can pretty much guarantee it to win if I do this the right way. Now, the biggest problem is this skill. Now, its first skill... Attacks all enemies and inflicts continuous damage for 3 turns. The damage increases if the enemy is suffering a harmful effect. This skill increases with more power the more harmful effects there are. In other words, it'll do, it'll do damage if there's none. It'll do more damage if there's one. It'll do even more damage if there's two debuffs on you. It'll do more if there's three and so on and so forth. So, if you can't cleanse the DOTs that this move gives you as well as the left crystal, if you can't cleanse them fast enough, you will get annihilated because this this attack by itself is actually very powerful and the damage that it does gets significantly boosted per debuff on you uh, i can usually take hits up to like two debuffs on me uh, but that's only one hit if i have one debuff on me it's not a problem but yeah just letting you know so that's the first thing how do you cleanse easy veramos veramos is the answer if you have a fast veramos mine is at 200 with verta heal which is solid that's solid because, like, I have it on Swift. So, like, the general strategy is that if you have Verti Heal, you want to have him at at least 180 speed if you have him on Swift. Sorry, on 200, Jesus Christ. 200 if you have him on Swift. Or 180 if you have him on Violent. With Verti Heal. Without Verti Heal, on average, you um, add up another 20 speed. So, if you don't have Verti Heal on your team, you need to have 220 speed on your Veramos if you have him on Swift. Or at least 200 if you have him on Violent. That's the general answer for that. But that's your cleanser. You need Veramos. He is the key to clearing those damn debuffs. Now, you need a healer to an extent. It kind of, it's a little tricky to say that, but I mean, I have Amon. He also helps with provoking the Zyros, which saves my run usually. Um, and, well, yeah, that's him. You need a high damage dealer. Sigmar's is actually better than Theo, but because I'm focusing on the right crystal, DOTs are actually useful, and he has DOTs, so that's nice, you know? And then Megan is a um, Caesar. She can remove the buffs on the dragon, of course. But she also has um, AoE attack and defense buff, as well as increasing the bar by another 20%. And she also has DOT. I wish her move would inflict DOT for two turns, but she's in that three. That's probably not going to happen, but whatever. And of course, Vertiheal is the main core monster in this team for ATB manipulation. That's Boiling Blood in this passive, as well as the skill, giving an additional 28% attack speed to all my monsters. So, I want to talk about what actually happens 
um, which causes me to die if I'm not focusing on the dragons. Now, this crystal over here, it says it removes a harmful effect on the boss and grants immunity for three turns. Now, here's the thing. When you're actually battling the dragon boss, this speed and the speed of the dragon are like in sync. Basically, you cannot get DOTs to trigger if this freaking crystal is still here. Because what's going to happen is that the crystal moves right before. It removes all the DOTs of the dragon. And then the dragon goes. Which honestly is BS. Like, I hate that so much. So, if you're going for an all-out face team. You call it the face team. on just fighting the dragon. You need to not rely on DOTs. Because that's not going to work. It's just simply not. If you're killing the right tower, though. You can do that. Now, the slowest strategy on beating this guy is by focusing on the left tower first, killing that, and then killing the right tower, and then the dragon. That's the slowest run, though. If you can clear DOTs fast enough with your Veramos, then you can just skip the left tower and focus on the right one, thus saving you another minute or so from the freaking run. Which is where I'm at. If you can deal enough damage, though, with your monsters, you can skip the right tower and just go straight into the legendary dragon. By having at least two Caesars, usually you have Belladion and Megan, as well as having an attack buffer, which is Megan, of course, and having Sigmaris, who deals more damage than Theo, thus not focusing on DOTs with Theo. And that's that. Like, that's amazing. That's an amazing run right there, alongside Veramos and Vertigil, of course. And then Belladion is also your healer, plus a defense breaker. So it, it works in both ways, you know, as you can see. Now, it's, it's really interesting because. It's like depending on what part of the game you're at and how fast you can do it, you would have a different team, of course. But what ends up killing me is that... I'm going to do the run one more time just to kind of show you. What ends up killing me against the actual dragon in the fifth area is that stupid second skill of the dragon. That second skill. Now, what ends up happening is that if one of my monsters uses an attack and destroy the right tower, the dragon will counterattack. It will seriously counterattack and will deal like three-fourths of HP on one of my monsters, the one who killed it. And then, if that's followed by the dragon attacking, like with its AoE move right away, that monster's dead. Like, you're, there's no saving him. There's no saving him. Unless it was Theo. Theo can actually survive. But, you know. And the reason why is because of his passive, of course. But I'm just saying. Like, so the strategy that I end up doing when I'm actually focusing on autoing is um, hopefully I can show it this time. It didn't happen last time because the DOT has naturally killed it. But when you land enough DOTs, okay, I need to focus on Zyro. See, that happened again. I wasn't paying attention. And then this happens sometimes. Luckily, I wasn't a defense buff there with Megan, so that was nice. But, um, yeah, so when you dish enough DOTs to the right tower, enough for the DOTs to kill it, you want to leave it alone and focus on the dragon. That way, the DOTs will kill it, and the dragon will not counterattack on any one of your monsters. So let me actually put it here into, you know, into action, once I clear this fourth room here. But yeah, that's the main thing that I do, because again, if one of my monsters actually kills it with an attack, it's going it's gonna get killed, like, probably. Okay, I did some decent damage right in my Amen. Okay, only one left. Hurry up, please. Okay, here we go. So just pay attention closely. I'm landing DOTs on the tower. Two DOTs already. And the thing is, I have three DOT users. I have Veramos, I have Theomars, and I have Megan, which is why I land so many that fast. Okay. There we go. That did 20% damage. Now, this attack will do another 25%. Okay, 30% damage on the next DOT, as you can see. Oh my god, this is amazing. Okay, do you see this DOT? So what I'm going to do right now... Just watch this. I'm going to switch over to the dragon. And here's why. If I actually attack the tower, keep attacking it, the monster who attacked the tower is going to get annihilated with this attack when the tower is destroyed. It, it might not die, especially if I have a defense buff, but the thing is, if it attacks with its AoE attack right after that, then it, it'll die. But did you see what just happened? The tower basically died by DOTs. That made this attack 
not work from the dragon, which means that it just didn't even attack me at all because the DOTs killed it. A monster didn't kill, but the DOTs killed it. Thus, it saved my run. But that right there, what I explained is basically the biggest reason why I end up dying sometimes, like again, 20% of the time. Because one of my monsters dies. If it's a more important monster, if it's Veramos, I lose. Because if Veramos dies, he can't cleanse. Thus, his attacks change so much damage, and you die in like three hits, and that's it. You can't do anything. If Amon dies, it's honestly not the end of the world. You would think so. But it's actually not. No, look at this. Even by me killing the freaking tower, one of my monsters died, as you can see. Theo? Um, yeah. Or sorry, not Theo. Uh, Megan? Because the other passive that I didn't talk about, his last skill, was a um, hmm, pretty good Endure Rune. Okay. The last skill was his passive. That when he's at less than 30% HP, his attacks get buffed up significantly, which is also true. Um, but honestly, that dragon is powerful. How do you survive that? Speed. Speed is the key. You need to be very fast, and you need a freaking land DOTs. Now, if you can do the actual face team and ignore the right tower, then don't focus on DOTs, but focus on attack buffs on your team, strong monsters like Sigmaris, and defense break on his team, as well as stripping him. And that's it. But that's the strategy. As you can see, it's a rather tough place to auto. It really is. But you can do it. I mean, I can do it, you know? And yeah. All right, so if you enjoyed this episode in any way, please be sure to leave a like. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great and a fantastic day.